So today we're going to look at how to add listeners to an existing application that uses Quartz. So before we add our listeners, let's look at the application we already have. So we have one job that's very simply just writing to the console, ex executing the example job, and it will be Magenta. In our program class, since it's a console app, we're just uh, getting our scheduler, we're, adding a, we're scheduling a job of the type that we just looked at, adding a trigger for it to fire every two seconds forever, then we start our scheduler. We're going to sleep the main thread, uh, and Quartz will go ahead and fire our job. It'll end up firing it three times on other threads. Then we're going to shut down our scheduler, and it will wait for any jobs that are currently running to complete. And then we're going to read line just so we see uh, the console. So if we run this, we can see it doing its thing. So we see executing the example job. We'll see it three times. And at this point, it's uh, shut down the scheduler, and we're just looking at the console at this point. So our goal now is to add listeners to Quartz so that we get more purview into what Quartz is actually doing. So there are three different types of listeners that Quartz provides. There are scheduler listeners, job listeners, and trigger listeners. And adding them is very simple. So if we, um, I, I've already created them here. If I open our, my job listener, all you need to do is create a class that inherits from iJobListener, and that's provided by Quartz. And that'll give you some methods to implement, uh, as well as this name property, which you can just name your, your listener. Um, fortunately, Quartz uh, has good method names, so it becomes very, very obvious uh, what these methods are, in fact, listening for. So um, in, in our case of job listener, we see job to be executed, job was executed, and if the job gets vetoed. Uh, in my simple example here, for all these listeners, all I'm doing is writing to the console. Uh, for my job listener, everything will be in yellow. It will help to sort of differentiate the different listeners once we look at the console in, in the various colors. So for job listener, we're yellow. Uh, we also have our trigger listener, uh, very similar. We just, imp we just implement the iTrigger listener that Quartz provides. And once again, gives a couple of different methods. Uh, the trigger being fired, if it was misfired, when it completes. Uh, one thing of note is this veto job execution. So every other uh, method in the listeners returns void except for this one. And what this is saying is essentially if you want to veto the given job that was just triggered. So if you return true here, that job will be vetoed. Also, if an unhandled exception occurs within here, it will be vetoed. So make sure to return false unless you do, in fact, intend to veto that job. That's the only caveat there. And then lastly, we have our scheduler listener, which implements iSchedulerListener. Uh, it has a bunch of methods. It has the most amount of methods for uh, the three listeners. So we think, see things around jobs being scheduled, triggers, um, things with the scheduler itself. So if it's in standby mode or started or shutting down, uh, we can listen for all those events. So that's it as far as creating listeners. Um, and for our, just to remind us that our job listener will write things in yellow, trigger will listen in Cy, will write in cyan, and scheduler will listen in green. So when we see on the console, we'll be able to differentiate. So lastly, we, we've created these, we just need to add them to our scheduler now. So if we go back to our program class, I'll uncomment this. Uh, so our scheduler has a thing called a listener manager where it manages the various listeners that we have. And we can uh, add a scheduler listen listener using this method here, just passing the, our implementation. Uh, same with add job listener and add trigger listener. Um, one thing to note for these two are, uh, in our case, we are listening to every job and to every trigger. But you do not have to listen to everything globally. You can narrow your scope. So um, Quartz provides a bunch of different, what it calls matchers. So if I type in matcher, IntelliSense sort of shows us the, the various ones. So I could do something like name matcher for job key, where the name contains example. And that would listen to uh, any jobs that in its job key has the word example, which R does. Uh, but for us, I'm just going to make it uh, global, but you can narrow your scope both for the job and for the trigger. Uh, scheduler is just sort of global because it's just attached to the particular scheduler that you're adding it to. And that's it.
Uh, we're again scheduling our job starting. It's going to execute our job three times. It's going to shut down the scheduler, and then we'll we'll uh, just read the line. So let's run it. So we see our listeners, in fact, listening and writing to the console. So in green, we see our scheduler listener, and we're adding jobs, scheduling it, starting the scheduler. Um, and then for each time our job is getting triggered, we see that the trigger was fired. We're deciding not to veto the job. We see that the job listener is telling, or yeah, the job listener is telling us it's about to execute. The job has executed now. Uh, our job listener telling us that it was. Uh, and our trigger listener saying that the trigger completed. So we see that three times for the three times that it was fired. And then lastly, our scheduler listener is in standby mode, shutting down and then shut down completely. So that's it. Um, in our example, we're just writing to the console, but you can imagine you can do whatever your application desires, whether it's logging to a database or taking various actions, uh, totally up to you. And, and that's it. So in the notes for the video, I'll go ahead and put the URL for a corresponding blog post for this video, as well as the source code on GitHub for the code that we just looked at. Thanks, guys.